Welcome to the live stream and God bless everyone. I hope this is working. It is a first recording after a few tries. So welcome if you're here. And for the time being, I am going with the assumption that everything is working. If it is not, the Lord will help us with the next. Welcome everyone and I am returning to YouTube uh, because so the Lord has directed me to with a message of urgency. We are in a season where the return of the Lord is imminent and beyond imminence. In fact, we have received, I have personally and with other brothers and sisters, received confirmations over confirmations over confirmations that the Lord is at the doors. I will be sharing some details of what the Lord has shared with me over the course of the next few weeks and whatever time we have allocated given by the Holy Spirit to do this. There will be some wisdom shared with everyone here, but the primary message of these new messages or series, which is called the preparation series, is that we're called to be prepared. And I hope you will be able to join us on this journey, short or long. We'll leave it up to the Lord to get ready and be prepared. Many are asking, what is there to prepare? Am I not already ready to meet the Lord? Well, this is a question I'm gonna ask you individually. And I would want to urge you to return to the Word of God and not to listen to men or women and they understand directly by the guidance of the Holy Spirit what ultimately it means to be counted worthy. We learned that in John 14, 26, where the Lord says the Holy Spirit will teach you all things. Now, there is one caveat, which is you have to allow the Holy Spirit to teach you all things. Unless you do that, the Holy Spirit is not going to impose any teachings on you. I hope this message is meeting with the many that are looking forward to the return of the Lord. And I hope this message is starting to sound different from what we have been hearing a lot on all kinds of platforms. But one of the things I encourage you to do today is to return to the essence of the gospel. We say, well, Brother Carlo, just tell us what you want to tell us. I am telling you that the gospel found in Romans 10 verse 9, which is that thou shalt confess if you shall confess the Lord Jesus with your mouth and believe it in your heart that the Lord raised it, that God raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. Well, I believe that already, perhaps you're saying. Wonderful. What I'm asking you to do is to go deeper into the understanding and asking the Holy Spirit to in fact explain to you this very verse, the words of the Holy Spirit. Because we know these are the words not of Paul, not of a man, but of the Holy Ghost, as it is said in Galatians 1, 11, where Paul says, I certify you brothers that this gospel was not taught of me by man, but that I learned it directly from the Lord Jesus. So Romans 10 verse 9 says, If you shall confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus. But the word in Greek, I explained it before, is homo logeo, which means to fully agree with. And the Lord Jesus is the word of God as per John 1, 1. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. And so to fully agree with the word of God is what saves you. Not simply saying, I confess the Lord Jesus. Because Mormons do that, Catholics do that, Jehovah Witnesses do that, and as I said before, even Muslims do that. While they don't believe he was raised from the dead, they confess his name. Fully agreeing with the word of God means that you're now walking in obedience as per 1 Peter 1. Walking in obedience means that you fully agree. Now, when you fully agree, you're walking in obedience, you're called to a life of righteousness and holiness. Well, Brother Carlo, but uh, 
I am the righteousness of Christ. I'm not righteous on my own means. That is true. We are not righteous on our own. It is the doing of the Holy Spirit in us that produces fruits of righteousness and holiness. This is what has been said in Ephesians 4, 24. Put on the new man. It says, put it on the new man, which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. This is not my words and is not my wisdom. It's simply the word of God. But there are churches today, and there's the vast majority, that profess that it's okay to live a life of sin. How are you putting on the new man created in God, after God, in righteousness and holiness, and, con and conduct a life of sin, of intentional, purposeful sin, disregarding what the Word of God is warning you about? It simply means you have not believed. And so you're called to return to the Word of God and fully agree with it. So that the Holy Spirit can work fruits of repentance through you, as per Ephesians 2, verses 8 to 10. This is what the gospel is about. It's not a series of rules or regulations. But it is, as per 1 Corinthians 13, unless we have love, we have nothing. But what is that love? Everybody loves God. But what is the love that the Holy Spirit is telling us unless we have that, we have nothing in 1 Corinthians 13. It's agape love 26. Greek word 26, Strong's 26, agape means what God prefers. That is to say that unless you prefer what God prefers, unless you love what God loves and hate what God hates, you don't have the love of God. You simply have a romantic, sentimental idea fed by pastors, apostles, and teachers who do not ask the Holy Spirit for teaching. As per Matthew 7, 7, ask and you shall receive. Ask what? Million dollars? A boat? A car? No, wisdom. Because that's what he says in James 1, 5. Ask. If you do not have wisdom, ask and God shall give it to you because he gives it to you liberally. So in Matthew 7, 7, we're called to ask and a pastor needs to go and ask before he comes onto the pulpit and speaks about the word of God because it's no longer important to receive the opinion of men or women. We're no longer into motivational speakers making us feel better. When the Lord is at the door and simply saying, be righteous and holy by the power of the Holy Spirit working through you because you fully agree with the Word of God that you say you believe in. And when you truly believe, then you agree, which means you walk in obedience and then the Holy Spirit is working through you fruits of holiness and righteousness. Unless we believe this message, the rapture could come and will come and those who do not fully agree with the Word of God will not be taken. And let not be fooled uh, also by the story that it, the rapture is for some elite people. The top crown of the Christianity is not. The rapture is for all of those who are counted worthy. Meaning, if you're not rapture and you die the second later, you're not showing up in heaven. The rapture is for all of those who are counted worthy, who are walking in obedience, filled with the Holy Ghost, walking in the Spirit, as per Romans 8.1. There's no condemnation now for those who are in Christ Jesus who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. For against these things, says Romans, there is no law. And so says Galatians 5. We're walking in the Spirit, filled by the Holy Ghost, producing fruits worth of repentance. Matthew 13, 23 says that the seed that falls onto the good ground are those who heard the Word of God, first step, understood it, and bore fruit, or bear fruit, some 100, some 60, some 30. Now, you have to hear the Word, but unless you understand it and bear fruit, the seed didn't fall on the good ground. So it's tossed out. Unless you're abiding in him, as per John 15, you're not producing fruit. You're not producing fruit. You're cut, you toss, and sent into the fire. 
this is a message of urgency to abandon the churches the teachers and the preachers don't listen to me go to the word of god we will be talking about preparation may all these be done for the glory of the lord in jesus might and holy name i pray the lord protect you amen <laughs>